Okay, so in a little bit, you guys are gonna hear the pretty standard, today's video is sponsored by Kind of Lion, but I gotta say before that, just real quick, in all honesty, this is by far one of the best experiences I've had on a TV gaming to date. Today's video is sponsored by LG. So, like I mentioned a couple weeks back in my burnout video, what a fun time that was, haha. <laughs> uh, one of the things we've been working on lately is getting some new setups going on for places to shoot in, and if the setup behind you looks familiar at all, it's because while it is a new set, it's actually kind of a classic set for me. So, way back when, in earlier years of the channel, this was one of the main places I used to shoot videos. I ended up going to a different location later, but I've swapped with John, and I'm back here, kind of feeling a little nostalgic for the old setup. Uh, and we just finally got it back together with this new gaming setup behind me featuring an awesome TV thanks to LG, the LG OLED C1. Now, some of this is still a little bit in flux right now, but the main idea with this set is we are gonna be having, as you can see, fun little things on display behind me right over here. And then of course the TV setup. I've got my PS5 and Xbox Series X in tower mode on top of a TV base that we've used a few times before. Normally I'd put them down below, but due to their size, I have those set up on top. I'm actually blocking the Xbox right now. It's there it is, back there. And then down below, you can see a couple of them right now are a few older retro setups, some of which are hooking in directly via HDMI. Others, I'm making use of upscalers when I want to use them. Now, what makes this TV a great fit for a gaming setup? Well, there's a couple things worth noting. Some of it is the kind of keywords that you're probably used to hearing a lot now for a lot of modern TVs that are aimed towards current gen systems, what are now current gen systems. Higher refresh rate hitting 120 hertz, variable refresh rate. We'll talk about a lot of stuff first, but one of the first things that I think really is important to focus on is the fact that it is an OLED TV. Now, you've probably heard of OLED TVs before, but if you're not sure what that actually means or what's so special about that, it makes it different from other screens, a lot a lot of it has to do with how it handles color and brightness. See, with an LED or LCD TV, there's a full backlit panel that's just shining light through the whole thing. And one of the best ways you can really notice this is if you ever had your TV on just a blank screen, you'll notice that while it is a black screen, it's not really the same level of depth of black as if the TV was just off. It kind of has this slightly lighter washed out effect. And that's because again, it's a single backlight lighting up the whole thing. With an OLED TV, it instead focuses on lighting up each individual pixel on the screen. So when it wants to depict something as just a deep dark black, it just doesn't light up the pixel. It stays a nice dark color rather than having any kind of light up effect happen. And so what this ends up allowing for is for a great contrast between those deep dark blacks and then those individually lit, vibrantly colored pixels. What helps bring a newer OLED like this one though to a whole other level is AI learning. See, the TV makes use of an A9 Gen 4 AI processor, which basically knows what content is being played on it and it can slightly adjust the image to make sure that it looks the best possible way it can for that particular content. So it's not necessarily doing the same thing for a video game versus if you're say watching a movie. And with features like Dolby Vision IQ and Dolby Atmos, the TV is taking into account its surroundings in terms of the lighting of the room, where it's placed in the room, how sound is traveling around it when it's coming out of speakers, and adjusts all of that on the fly to give you the best possible experience. Sounds fancy, I know, but really the main takeaway here is it makes for a really good image. But again, our main focus here for this set and the setup and my personal use of it is its use as a gaming TV. So let's talk about again, some of those major keywords it's really hitting on. This is of course a 4K TV that is also HDR, which is kind of implicit with having Dolby Vision, but the point is that it has great colors, high resolution, all the kind of stuff that's more standard across a lot of the new current gen systems with the Series X and the PS5, but there's a lot of other new terms that are really important to keep up with. First off, variable refresh rate. Now this is something that we are still waiting on for the PS5, but it is currently available on the Xbox Series X as well as the Xbox One for that matter. And also if you choose to hook up a PC tower to this that has a GPU that's capable of FreeSync or G-Sync, depending on if it's NVIDIA or AMD, the TV will work with that as well. What this basically does is it makes sure that the TV and your system are synced in terms of the refresh rate and frame rate. Whatever frame rate the system is currently pushing out, the TV is going to make sure its refresh rate matches that. And where that really becomes important is in some games where the refresh rate isn't quite as stable as you might hope it to be. This is why sometimes in games you might experience screen tearing where the top half doesn't perfectly match up with the bottom half and that's because the system is trying to keep up with the refresh rate of the television. That doesn't happen because again, now they are in sync. It also helps to smooth out if there's any kind of frame drop issues in a game. While it doesn't completely get rid of the noticeable change of frame rate, it does make it look 
a lot smoother when it happens, as opposed to how choppy it would be if it didn't have variable refresh rate on. But in my experience, we're seeing it pop up more and more again. Because of the higher frame rate, a lot of systems are now targeting 120 frames. So this TV, along with variable refresh rate, is a 120Hz television, so it's able to show at that proper speed. And again, when games are pushing that, that's when we're seeing certain titles, again, suffer from things like screen tearing or a change in frame rate, and that's not having as adverse of an effect as it would have, because again, variable refresh rate is supported. At least on the Xbox, PlayStation 5, someday soon, hopefully. Something else worth noting that plays in all of this as well is the ports on the TV. Now, something you may have noticed if you've picked up a current gen system or you've heard people talk about a lot is HDMI 2.1. And the point of HDMI 2.1 is that it allows for a certain degree of data to be transferred from the system to the television. The important aspect of this is 4K 120. With older HDMI ports and HDMI cables, you're able to do 4K 60, you could do 1080 120, but 4K 120 is just a bit too much for those older ones to handle. That's also why if you get a current gen system, you might notice that the HDMI cables say something like ultra high speed on them. And if you don't use those cables and instead say use the old HDMI cables from your previous system, it's not gonna actually allow you to do those higher speeds. And so thankfully this TV, all four ports support HDMI 2.1, so you can have the Xbox in one port, the PS5 in another port, not have to worry about which ones do and do not support that speed. All of them work with 2.1, so you can rest assured that you are getting that proper display quality. Which also, by the way, if you weren't aware of that, please don't use the wrong HDMI cable with your system. If you just got a new one, don't mess up the image quality by using an older cable. Make sure you're using what's included or you go out of your way to buy a 2.1 HDMI cable because you wanna get that image quality and really get the full use out of the system. Now, a lot of this sounds really cool in making sure that your game looks pretty, but something that is of course very important to make sure that you can actually play the game well is response time. If you've ever played a game on a different display than usual, notice that maybe the reactivity isn't quite the same as usual. You hit a button, it doesn't happen quite as fast as you're used to, that's because whatever display you're using isn't giving you the same response time. Depending on what kind of display you're using and what kind of additional post-processing it's trying to do, this can result in a slower signal, which isn't great for games because things are happening slower than you'd like them to. Which thankfully, a lot of modern TVs, including the C1, are designed with this in mind, and the C1 in particular can be configured in a way to get you a response time as low as one millisecond, which is fantastic. And something the C1 does to help simplify a lot of this, by the way, is the game optimizer. Instead of having to walk through every single setting on your TV to fine tune it for gaming specifically, the C1 has a specific menu called the game optimizer, where you turn that on and immediately make sure that it's set to all the proper settings that are best for gaming in mind. So for instance, it's turning off different forms of post-processing to make sure that you get that fast response time that's really important, make sure that you have the right HDR and color settings, the right brightness settings, and even has some additional customization options for things like a blue light filter so you don't have as much eye strain if you're playing super late at night, or even some preset options that adjust the picture a bit based on the type of game, whether that's an FPS, an RPG, or an RTS. I know a lot of this can end up sounding a lot like technical jargon, but really the big important takeaway is all these things combined together really do lead to a great gaming experience. I've used a few different gaming oriented TVs in the past, and this has been by far my best experience to date. Sure, again, some of the important boxes are checked like 4K HDR, 120 Hertz refresh rate, VRR, so on and so forth. but. Really, even aside from all that stuff and making sure that I have that, the image quality you get on this is just so beautiful. The vibrancy of the colors, the contrast between the darks and the likes, the clarity of the image. I mean, playing a lot of current gen stuff on here absolutely looks better. And this is one of the things that I think sometimes a lot of people really underestimate is the quality of the display they're using. They'll buy a new system and be like, oh yeah, this is the new one that has the higher resolution and the higher everything, and that's great and it will benefit you, but ultimately the display is a very important aspect of getting that best picture quality possible. And in my experiences with the C1, that really does show. And really, even going beyond that point, it's not really just about current gen games. I think sometimes when people look at TVs like this, the whole focus is just, oh man, I'm definitely gonna get the most out of my Series X or PS5. And, and obviously that is an important thing because those are the hot new systems that people focus on. But even using older systems that don't hit those same high resolutions benefit from the better display. Whether you're using a system that still supports HDMI like the PS3, or if you're making use of a fancy upscaler to use an older system like a PS2 or even SNES. 
These older systems still benefit from the added clarity and colors of these newer displays, and it's something that really does make some older titles shine more than you might think they would. In fact, in particular, lately I've been playing the Ratchet & Clank HD collection because I want to play some catch-up and be ready for Rift Apart. Somehow this is a series I always end up kind of sleeping on, but playing that on my PS3 on the screen looks awesome. I also have yet to test this just yet, but I also have a new upscaler coming in the mail very soon that I plan on using with some of my older systems, PS2 in particular is coming to mind right now since the Xbox already handles all my backwards compatible stuff, and I'm so excited to see what those games look on here as well. So yeah, this is a setup we're going to start seeing a lot more in videos featuring that TV by which this, this way this way, featuring this TV behind me right here. I'm still in the middle of, I think, fine tuning some of the other stuff going on. We're probably gonna switch in and out a few different little collectibles and other little display kind of things, but the new office is coming together and I cannot wait to shoot more videos in this setup and play some more games because it really does look awesome.